This video is about internal resistance and EMF. So our key ideas here are, um, what do we mean by this term EMF? What do we mean by this term internal resistance? And then, most crucially of course, what does this actually do with circuits? So really we need to just sort of go back to basics here and understand um, what a battery actually is and how does it work. So it doesn't matter about all this detail, but what matters is that you've got some chemical reactions going on here where something is um, donating electrons and something is accepting electrons. So at each um, electrode in this battery, there's some sort of chemical reaction going on. So for example, it might be copper atoms turning into copper ions, and that creates a certain um, push, if you like, on the electricity. It gives the electrons energy. But then there's also got to be some kind of store of these ions and something for them to move through. Okay, this is the electrolyte. So you really need to think about the battery being two sort of parts. One part where the chemical reaction is going um, and one part where the, elect the um, ions are going to move through the cell. So that brings us to our first term. Um, electromotive force is a rather strange term, okay, because it's not really uh, a force. We're not going to measure it in newtons. Um, but this is the energy provided to each unit of charge. Sometimes you'll hear it called the work done on each charge uh, as it passes through the cell. Okay, so if you think about this, it's going to be measured in volts because it's the energy per unit charge. And when the current through the cell increases, then nothing happens to the EMF, okay? The EMF stays the same because it's the same chemical reaction. You know, for example, you might have um, a copper atom turns into a copper ion plus two electrons, okay? It doesn't matter how many times that's happening, okay? Because all these two electrons care about is this one reaction that's happened to them. So whatever the current through the cell is, the EMF stays the same. Okay, then internal resistance. So forget about the electrodes now. Think about this is part of the circuit. The electrons have to get from here to here, okay? Probably like being carried by something else, but the electrons have to get across the cell. So there's some energy used to do that, and this is to do with the internal resistance. The easier it is for them to get across, the less the internal resistance will be. So internal resistance is a resistance, so it's measured in ohms. And again, the internal resistance won't change with the current, okay, any more than the resistor in a circuit will change as you change the current through it. Okay, and then this leads us to our third crucial term, which is the terminal PD. Okay, so this is what do we get out of the battery if we measure between the two, elect uh, the two ends. So if I connect my voltmeter across the cell, okay, how many volts do I get? Well, of course, that's the tricky question because they've gained some energy here from the chemical reactions, but they've lost some more energy here on their way through the cell. Okay, so um, what happens here is we measure it in volts, but as the current increases, then how many volts there are here because of V equals IR, uh, I'm right, it's a little r because the internal resistance, we usually use the symbol small r. So as the... Um, current increases, there are more volts used up in getting the electrons through the cell. Okay, so the terminal PD will decrease as the current increases. Okay, um, if we want a definition of EMF, then um, this is a nice straightforward one. The EMF of the cell is the PD measured across its terminal when no current flows, because if no current flows, then there won't be any lost voltage in here. You won't be using any energy up to get the electrons to get the electrons to flow through the cell. So therefore, all you'll be measuring is the energy gained from the from the reactions at the electrodes. Okay, so we need to draw this in a circuit just to help it help it uh, be easier for us to understand. Really, so up till now, a cell has looked like that. So. All we need to do now is we need to try and think of it as two separate parts, okay? Crucially, it's not two separate things that you could physically separate in the real world. Hopefully you've gathered that by now. You can't have electrodes without having something in between them to carry the um, ions between the two electrodes. 
but we can draw it like that. So the dotted line around the outside is the battery, and the two things that make the battery up, the chemical reactions, if you like, are still represented by the cell symbol, but we've got this internal resistance. Okay, so the green part there represents the part that gives it the EMF, and the red part is the internal resistance. But we couldn't connect a voltmeter anywhere inside here. The only way we can connect a voltmeter is between the two ends here. Okay, so you can't measure E where the circuit's running because you can't connect a voltmeter, say for example in there, and get E on, and also you can't measure the lost volts here across the internal resistance. Okay, so here's um, a circuit. I'm going to do some numbers first just to um, get the idea of it. So the total resistance of the circuit, okay, well, we've got two and a half ohms externally, but we've got half an ohm inside the battery as well. Okay, so up until now that'd be a two and a half ohm resistance, but now we can see hopefully the total resistance is three ohms. So the current flow is what well, we know, I equals V over R, so we've got um, one and a half volts across the entire circuit, which has got a resistance of 3 ohms, so we'll get half an amp. So what's the PD across the 2.5 ohm resistor? Well, we know here, put the information on the diagram as you get it. Uh, so we can see here that we've got a current flow in here of 0 0.5 amps. So to work out this voltage across here, I do V equals IR, which gives me 1 and a quarter volts. So I've connected the resistor to one half volt battery. I'm thinking I'm going to get one and a half volts, but I only actually end up with one and a quarter. Why is that? Well, there must be a quarter of a volt lost in here. Okay, so this is what we call a lost volts. Two ways of getting this number. One is that we know that we've just worked out this is 1.25. And remember Kirchhoff's second law says that the EMF is equal to the sum of the PDs around any loop of the circuit. So we've got 1.25 there, we must have 0 0.25 there. But also, we know we've got half an amp flowing through there, and therefore half times a half gives us a quarter of a volt. Okay, so if I connect a voltmeter across the terminals of the cell, so if I connect a voltmeter between here and here, right, well that's the same as that voltmeter, so you can see that's hopefully that's one and a quarter volts. But also if you look at this side, it's gained one and a half volts there from the EMF. It's lost a quarter of a volt there from the what they call the lost volts. So overall, that's a gain of one and a quarter. Okay, so the PD across the terminals of the cell is 1.25 volts. Okay, we can do that algebraically, exactly the same, um, to derive the formula which are on the sheets, um, on the equation sheets. Um, I would really advise you not to get too worried about the equations on the formula sheets, okay? I would get, get you to just go back to first principles and just imagine that this is two resistors, but sometimes people like to use the formula, so just so you're clear where they came from. How do we get the total resistance of the circuit? Well, we added together the external resistance and the internal resistance. How do we get the current in the circuit? Well, we said that's equal to the total PD around the circuit, which we know must be equal to E divided by the total resistance, which was R plus R. So the PD across the external resistor is the current times the resistance, which um, we can write as V equals IR, or I could have written in there, that's ER over R plus R. Okay, the PD across the internal resistance is IR. So the PD across the um, cell terminals is the EMF minus the IR, or sometimes... Okay, this is this equation just written down here. So these equations are on the sheet, but as I say, I would think of this in terms of just having two resistors. It just happens that one of them is inside the battery. Okay, just a few sort of questions to see if we've got the ideas. So the maximum current that this cell can supply, well, if you... Um, before this lesson, if somebody had said you shorted out the terminals of a one and a half volt battery, what's the biggest current? You'd say, well, I can connect it with zero resistance, so I could get an infinite current. But in fact, what you find is even if you build this circuit, so if I just draw it for you here, even if you build a circuit here and you think you've got this circuit and you put zero ohms here and you do a V equals IR and work out that you've got 1.5 divided by zero, an infinite current, in fact, that's not true because you've always got a half ohm there you can't get rid of. 
Okay, so the biggest you can possibly get, sorry, let's come up in the wrong order, the biggest you can possibly get is I equals V over R, one half over half, three amps. Okay, a battery of EMF of 12 volts and internal resistance terms is connected to a 6 ohm external resistance. So let's just quickly draw that so that we can see the idea. So we've got um, 6 ohms externally. We've got 2 ohms internally. Okay, here's the bit that we can't separate. So what's the PD across the terminals of the cell? Well, we know that we've got 12 volts altogether across 8 ohms altogether which gives us 1.5 amps. We must have lost 1.5 times 2 in there so 3 volts is the lost volts so we end up with 9 volts across here. Or we could have done 1.5 times 6. Okay, Question 3 is the sort of question that you're most likely to get in the exams. So um, sometimes they draw the circuits in some sort of different ways but Often they draw it like this. So here's our voltage. Let's put an internal resistance in there. And then down here they put a switch. And here's our external resistance of 4 ohms. So what they say is when the switch is open, um, you get 2 volts. What they're telling you that is that the EMF of the cell is 2 volts. But when it's connected to a 4 ohm resistor, this falls to 1.6. So when you close the switch... This reads 1.6 volts. What tells you what that tells you is the current here. Okay, across here, 1.6 volts, because that voltmeter and that voltmeter are reading the same voltage. If you look at the circuit carefully, that will tell you the current. So we've got I equals V over R, so 1.6 over 4 is 0.4 amps. Okay, so up here we know we've got 0.4 amps going through the internal resistance, and we know that that is losing 0.4 uh, volts across there. Sorry if that's too small to read, 0.4 volts across there. So um, the lost volts is 0.4. The current is 0.4 amps. Sorry, that should be an equal sign. The current is 0.4 amps there. So the resistance internally is the 0.4 volts divided by the 0.4 amps. So we've actually got 1 ohm of internal resistance, 4 ohms of external resistance, okay? Hopefully you can see there the total resistance of the circuit is 5 ohms. That's why we've got 2 volts over 5 ohms. It gives us 1.6 volts. If you draw all that together, you'll see probably if you make a mistake. Okay, I'm not going to go through all this one, but just uh, one important example I'd quite like to ask about. Um, in car batteries, a car battery is only 12 volts, and yet it can start a car. You need a very big current, so you might need 120 amps to start a car. How is that possible with internal resistance? Well, the thing about um, car batteries, lead-acid batteries, is that they have a very, very low internal resistance. You couldn't get um, 120 amps out of dry cell batteries, however many you had, because every time you add another one, you get more um, EMF, but you also get more internal resistance. Okay, so if you think about those cells before, where we said the biggest current you can get is 3 amps, it doesn't matter how many of them you get, if you get 100 of those, you'll get 100 times the EMF, but you'll get 100 times the resistance. So to make a car battery work, what you need is a battery with a very small internal resistance in order to um, provide a very large current.